Hey Martin, I'm here with my wife and my three-year-old daughter, and we're homeless. Good morning. Uh, we live out in the Kakako area, um, where the children outnumber the parents or the adults two to one. Uh, a lot of families are there, and I just want to share with you what the children go through. Um, the children have it the hardest. Uh, they never chose to be there, and believe me, we don't want to be there. You know, I don't want to be homeless. I'm trying everything I can to get off the street. Um, sometimes it's degrading, you know. I don't know how to explain this to my little girl. The kids, they take cold showers every night. Sometimes there's no place to shower, you know. The ladies, they have to use the bathroom. They have to use the bathroom at a certain time because places close. You know, if you get caught in the park, you get a ticket. Um, trying to explain to your child why city and county or the policemen took their toys and threw them away. That's hard. Um, I've been listening to all this and Mr. Yang, I don't know where he's got his information from, but I invite any one of you to, as someone, not as yourselves though, you know, not as chairperson or council member or whatever, to go to a shelter just as someone with your family and see if he can get in tonight. You'll be put on a waiting list. You know, I don't know where they say they got bed space. We've been on a waiting list for a long time. And we missed our spot because my ID got taken away. So we've been out there for nine months now. Um, and in the nine months, Kakako has grown with more and more families. I don't know why. For us personally, it's because it's centralized. There's jobs, um, welfare, um, just everything everybody needs, you know. Um, we see Mr. and Mrs. Oshiro passing out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches more than we ever seen IHS come out. I think I've only seen IHS once in the nine months we've been there. Um, if it wasn't for those people, like Mr. and Mrs. Oshiro, a lot of those children would go without blankets, clothes, food, you know. There's a lot of horror stories that go on about sweeps. It paralyzes you. Parents who want to get off the street can't get a job because they're paralyzed. We never know when a sweep is coming. You know, and by the time we know a sweep is not coming, it's afternoon. You know, and that's the only time you have to go, you know, look for a job. Um, but by then, kids gotta get to the showers. You know, things have to be done, tents set up. It's a hard life. I never in my life imagined it would be this hard. You know. And believe me, I'm trying everything I can to get off the street. And things like this bill, which criminalized, my daughter's three years old today. And if this bill passes, they're gonna label her as a criminal because she sleeps on a sidewalk. You know, we have no place to go. You know, if there was a safe zone, I honestly believe there's a lot of those families would be able to get off the street. It's only because we're paralyzed. You know, we once came from society. We have a lot of personal items. Some of us don't have storage. And every sweep, they lose a little and a little more. I mean, I understand the business owners, you know, but still, you know, it's hard. 
sometimes at night, a security guard will come, three o'clock in the morning, wake you up, to get off the dirt, move the tent, get the family up, move everything off the dirt. Here comes HPD. HPD tells you, get off the sidewalk. We gotta get off the sidewalk, go back on the dirt. It's hard. We go back and forth sometimes, daily. It depends on how either security guard or HPD feels, or what they're going through, you know. I've never been picked on so much in my life, you know, just for being homeless. It's hard, you know. I can speak for Kaka'ako because we try to, we actually have a community there, you know. We don't want to be there. We don't want to disrupt anyone's lives. We want to get on with ours. So we communicate with each other. We try to police each other. Um, but still, you know, we get the stairs. You know, we're an eyesore. You know, never planned on hurting anybody's eyes. You know. <clears throat> I just ask that you guys think about the children. Because after hearing all this, I can see clearly that the children aren't even think, thought about. You know. That's it, I guess. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here with us this morning. Members, any questions? Vice Chair Harimoto. Thank you very much for coming today and sharing. Thank you, too. Thank you, really brought face to the homeless, so I really do appreciate hearing your story. Um, I have many questions, but I guess I'll just ask a couple. First, you said that you don't have your ID because it got taken away. Was that in a sweep? Yes. And you can't get it back? No. And you need an ID to get in the shelter? Yeah. And of course, you need an ID to get a job? Mm-hmm. So I'm paralyzed. <laughs> and it's been made even tougher to get an ID, you know, with documents, so. Mm -hmm. So if we pass this bill, what would happen to you and your family? Worst scenario, it's like what the, the lady said, I probably go, who do you guys arrest? Do you arrest the whole family for being on the sidewalk or just one person? If you're on the family, if your family's on the sidewalk, it's everybody on the sidewalk. I mean, we have no place to go. So it'll just be a cat and mouse game, you know, like it already is. Yeah. So right now when you get, when the sweep comes by, you move away. You grab your but stuff. later you go back. And then we go back. Mm -hmm. We have no place to go. No. Thank you very much for sharing. Members, any further questions for Mr. Martin? Council Member Menor. Yeah, so just for clarification, you know, how many shelters have you applied to? Next step, um, my wife knows. She's the one who's been doing it. Okay, but it's been several shelters. Yes. And you've got pending application before several shelters. Yes. And you're saying that on all of those shelters with respect to uh, the applications that you had submitted, that uh, you're, you're on the waiting list for all of them? Okay. There's uh, not only me. <laughs> There's a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. um, are you, are either you or your wife, or your wife currently employed? You're not employed. No. Are you Are you looking for employment? Yes. What kind of employment are you looking for? Um. I was a chef before, but since being homeless, um, I've been learning a lot of maintenance and stuff. Been building things for the people out there. You know, putting things on wheels so it can get away fast. But um. Uh, looking for maintenance work, handyman work. So. Did your wife want to add something in regards to my question about the uh, availability of shelter space? Yeah, there's been maybe about three applications that's been denied because of his identification issue. Um, when oh, can you speak? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you push the microphone a little closer to you? Um, sorry. There. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Please proceed. Okay, so. Like his ID has been a big issue with him because everything that states who he is, his social security card, his birth certificate, his marriage certificate, and his ID, his state ID card, has been taken in a sweep. And it wasn't, okay, 
I thought the law was you could take your ID and your medication, right? But because everything is so frustrating for us, my husband had, you know, had a hard time to express in a more calm way of what he was feeling that day to a police officer. They told him if he was to touch anything behind the red tape, he would get arrested right there. And because I said something, he would arrest me. Take my child away, call CPS. Compassionate disruption uh, is nothing like it says, uh, I don't know where the logic is in that. I've seen a woman who just given birth a week ago with a little infant. A sweep came, took all the baby's diapers, the baby's formula, the blankets, tent. I did it. And she had nothing. She had nothing that night, and it was raining, it was pouring. You know, I don't wish this on anybody. I just wish people would think a little bit more in depth, like the children who's been forgotten. And as mm -hmm. for the um, uh, these outreach people coming out, um, IHS has only come out once. And they came out the day after we were on the media. One time. Okay, yeah, one, one quick follow-up. So your husband, I asked a question about the, the fact that you were, your husband says that you are on the waiting list with respect to several no. shelters. Is See, that correct? We, we were on a waiting list for one shelter, but that got denied as soon as he wasn't able to present an ID. But why now? Well, I mean, well, we've been offered from Mr. Yang that, uh, to go into Next Step Shelter. But what about the families before us that were on that list? Because technically we're not on the list, right? So uh, why show us favor? Let me explain. Uh, after being on the news, we've had um, Mr. Yang come out and ask us, well, offer us to get into the shelter right away because I lost my ID. I refused because there is a waiting list and why should I go ahead, you know, because I was on the news, you know. That's not fair. And I'm pretty sure it'll make some people mad. And we're already down, you know. So we just wanna be fair. You know. A lot of families have already applied for shelters before us. And we don't wanna jump in front of them. I just want to clarify, Chair, that Bill 48 does not include Kakako. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member uh, Fukunaga, you had something that you wanted to add? Oh. No, I didn't have any questions. Okay, did you want to add anything about uh, the IHS, Waikiki Health Center at all? Oh, okay. Um, I believe that the Kakaako area is under um, contract by Waikiki Health Center. I don't know mm -hmm. if Waikiki Health Center has approached you. Yeah, that's what we've, we've heard Next step. last week. Is that Next Step? Yeah. They operate Next Step Shelter, yeah, and they, I, they I do, do believe they have outreach workers, you know, in that area. I believe yeah. IHS is kind of more in the um, uh, downtown Chinatown, Kalihi area. Yes, they have, came, um, they have come last week, I believe, also after the media. But the, the other Next Step sh uh, workers that do come around, they, drive, they used to pick up the rubbish around the Kaka'ako area, but they've been I guess neglecting um, Oha or Ohe Street, and I'm not sure why, but that there used to be a rubbish can that the city and county took and deemed that uh, no trash zone or something. But well, we worked with HCDA and they got us a dumpster, dumpster and stuff. We are people who are trying to coexist. With yeah. the normal citizens. I mean, if you go to Kakako now, mm -hmm. we've worked, we've really pulled together as a community, you know, a homeless community. And I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but we work 
Uh, we've got each other's backs more than a regular community does. But this kind of bills is making us chronically homeless too. You know, not just the guy with the mental health issues or the drug addiction. Yes. This My kind of bills will it. also make I mean, us. He, he never, you know, planned on getting a heart attack. Yeah. He never planned on staying in the hospital, being hospitalized, unable to work. He didn't plan on losing his job because he wasn't able to go back at full capacity. So, I mean, and a lot of families aren't out there because they're drug addicted or, you know, mentally ill. They have kids. And as a community, we watch each other's backs for those kids. I think that's the reason why a lot of more families have been coming to Kaka'ako when they lose their homes. And to answer your question about Waikiki, they're slowly making their way to Kaka'ako. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Members, any further questions for the Martins? Thank you. Mr. Martin, thank you. Mrs. Martin, thank you very much for being here with us this morning.